Okay, our last problem is the weighted average method. And this one is really different. And for some students, this one really throws them. And for other students, people, um, students think this is the easiest method ever. Um, and so very similar example, you've got your beginning balance again, you've got your purchases, you've got your sales. Notice this time, it's still again, asking you to calculate the cost of goods sold, ending inventory and gross profit for the month. This time you using the weighted average method. And then it gives you a little bit of additional instructions here. Because you are doing an average, you may have some rounding involved when we get to calculating the average unit cost. Um, and so the instructions are telling you do not round the unit cost. So when you're calculating the weighted average unit cost, it's telling you not to round it. So if it's five or six decimal places out, it's telling you to keep it that long. I have tested this problem um, five, or separate, five or six different scenarios of, of this problem. And if you round it to at least three decimal places, don't round it to two, but take it out to three decimal places, then the numbers work out correct. So you don't have to keep it out seven, eight, nine digits. If you round it to three decimal places, you, you should come up with the right answer. And, and you'll, this will become more clear when we go to the example. And then it says, do round the total cost to the nearest cent on each transaction. So for all the other methods we've done, we've rounded everything to the nearest whole dollar because we haven't really had to deal with cents. In this particular problem with the weighted average problem, you will have cents to round to. So when you're coming up with your cost of goods sold, your ending inventory and your gross profit, it may be you know $7,570.15, whereas with all the rest of them, they were just dollars. And so let's bring up our example, our Excel example. It's the exact same example I've used for all of the other three um, methods. And again, on this one, I'm saying round your per unit cost to at least three decimal places. Um, the mom instructions tell you not to round this at all, but I'm telling you I've, I tested it like five different scenarios of that problem. And if I've kept it to three decimal places, my, my answers came out correct every time. Um, and so again, we start off with our beginning inventory. We have 160 units at $24 a piece, and we don't have to figure out a weighted average on this one because they're all the same cost. The only time you have to figure out an average is if you have um, different batches and they cost different amounts. So after each transaction, you should figure out your, your average. And so on the next one, I have a purchase, right? I have 70, uh, 70 units at $26 a piece. And so if I bring down what I had before, the 160 units at $24 a piece, and my 70 units at $26 a piece, oops, my math is, and I calculate that out. Um, I come up with total cost for what I have on hand right now, which what I have on hand right now is in light green. So if I add these two together, my total cost, 3,840 plus 1,820 is $5,660, right? That's my total cost of these um, 230 units that I have. To get your weighted average, okay, your weighted average is going to be your total cost available at that particular time divided by the number of units available at that particular time. Okay, that's going to be your weighted average. So my total cost of these two here added together, these amounts in green, is 5,660. My total number of units, when I add 160 and 70 together, is 230 total units. So let me add another column in here. So this is my cost, and this is my number of units. Right, so I've got 160 units plus 70 units. And so when I divide those, remember my weighted average is my total cost divided by my number of units. So when I divide 5,660 by 230 number of units, I need to get rid of that dollar sign there. I get 2,400, I'm sorry, $24.6087. Remember I told you to take it to three decimal places. Um, and so if we round that up to three decimal places, it'd be 
nine because this is a seven, that eight rounds up to a nine. Okay, so my weighted average unit cost is going to be $24.0609 per unit. Okay, so after every transaction, you should figure out your new weighted average unit cost. $24.0609. $24.609. Take it out to three decimal places, not to two like a normal sense, but at least three. If you take it to two, your numbers are going to be wrong at the end because of rounding. Remember, my math told you not to round this at all. So my math would have you taking this out seven or eight decimal places. But if you take it to three, you should be okay. All right, the next transaction is a sale. We sold 80 units on January 8th. Okay, so we need to calculate how much those 80 units cost us. But again, now we're not under LIFO, we're not under FIFO, so we're not going to be taking the first ones in or the last ones in, or we're not going to be specifically told which ones we sold. Now we're going to take these 230 units that we have on hand, and we're going to cost them out at this weighted average, no matter whether they're sold or they're still sitting here at the end. Okay, so all 230 of these units are now going to be costed out at this 24.609 cents per unit. Okay, because some of us some of them cost me 24 and some of them cost me 26. So when it says I sold 80 units, I'm going to cost them out at 24.609 per unit. And so when I do that math there, when I multiply 80 times the weighted average price that I've calculated, that gives me $1,968.72. Okay, because it tells us in my math to round this to the nearest cent. Okay, so what do I have left? What do I have left on hand? I take my $5,660 for the cost that I had, and I subtract out what I just sold, and that gives me what I have left. Okay, $3,691.28. And I had 230 units, and I just sold 80, so I've got 150 units left. Okay? And that should come back to the 24.609. And you could do the math if you wanted to. 369, 1.28, 150. And you should come up with the same, right? Um, 24.609. So you can key that in if you wanted to, but it's not, it's not necessary. All right, so let's do another one. Now we've got a purchase. So now I've got these 150 units, which are now going to be costed out at 24.609 um, until we have another sale. So 3691.28 is what they're going to be um, left at. And I have a purchase that I just made. I purchased 45 more units at $27 a piece. And so, again, every time I have a purchase at a different dollar amount, I have to calculate my new average. So what is, this is what I have available on hand now. Let me change that. Okay, what I have on hand now is I have some at $27 and some at an average price of $24,609. So I have to calculate my new weighted average again. So if I get my total cost now, add these two together, $3,691.28 plus the $1,215, I've got total cost of $4,906.28. And I've got a total number of units of 195. So what is my average? If I take my cost and divide it by my number of units, I should get $25.16 um, if I round to three decimal places. Okay, so that's my new weighted average. So if I sold any of these 195 units in my next transaction, they would be costed out at this new weighted average. Okay, my next transaction is another purchase. So I'm going to purchase 25 more at $28 a piece. So again, I could bring down just my total cost if I wanted to, 4906.28. That's what I had before. 195 units, and I've got an average cost of $25.16. That's what we just calculated. And I'm adding to that 25 units at $28 a piece, which gives me 700 in total. 
So now what do I have on hand? I have these items here in, let me do it in green, teal, okay? So what's my new average, weighted average cost? I've got 4,906.28 from um, the transaction right before, plus the $700 that I just purchased. So my new total cost is 5,608.28. My, my total number of units now is the 195 I had from it before, plus the 25 that I just purchased. So I have a total number of units now of 220. So my new weighted average cost is just my cost divided by the number of units. So again, if I take my cost divided by the number of units, and I take it out to three decimal places, I've got 25.483. So that now if I sell any of these 220 units that I have here in teal, they're going to be costed out at my new weighted average unit cost of 25.483. And that's what exactly what happens in the next two transactions. I'm going to sell 60 units and then I'm going to sell another 100 units. If you don't have another purchase, which we don't, right? I have two sales. Then my weighted average cost is not going to change because I'm not adding any new costs, right? This is my weighted average cost. So if I'm only doing sales, then I don't have to calculate a new weighted average because I'm not adding any new costs here. The only reason this is changing, this weighted average cost is changing, is because every time I'm making a purchase, they're costing me a different amount, right? My first batch cost me 24 and then 26, and then 27, and 28. So every time my cost is different, my weighted average cost is going up. When I'm selling, it doesn't matter. My weighted average cost is not going to change because I have no new costs being added. Let me say that one more time. When you're having a sale, you do not have to recalculate your weighted average unit cost because I have no new cost being averaged. That weighted average unit cost is not going to change. And so now these 220 units that are being sold are going to be sold at the weighted average of 25.483 um, 25 cents per unit. So when I'm calculating my per unit cost is 60 times the 25.483. And then I just do the math. 60 times the per unit weighted average cost oops, gives me 15.2898. And so then what do I have left? Right, I had 220 units and I just sold 60, so I've got 160 units left. I had 5,606.28 and I just subtract out what I just sold, 1,528.98, and that'll give me what's left. Okay, so what I have left on hand after that sale of those 60 units, let me do it in pink, is for um, $1,077.30. Again, all these costs, the total cost should be rounded to the nearest cent, average unit cost to three decimal places. And you could calculate this again, you could take the $4,077.30 and divide it by 160, but just, I'm telling you, you're still going to come up to 25.483. And so now I have another sale, I have another 100 units, and they are going to be costed out the same 25.483. And so when I do that math and multiply 100 units times $25.0.483, I get $2,548.30. Then i got to calculate what I have left because that's the last transaction for the month. So now I need to calculate my ending inventory. I had 160 units before this sale and I just sold 100. So that leaves me with 60 units left. I had cost of $4,077.30 and I just sold $2,548.30, right? So my cost now is $1,529. That's what I have left over at the end. And let me do this in, let's do it in blue. And so if, again, if you wanted to calculate your unit cost, it should come back very close to 25.483. It may be a cent or two off simply because of rounding, but it should be very, very close. And you can see there it is exactly on the spot, 25.483. And we could do it here as well. 
if you wanted to, $4,077.30. I had 160 units. And if I calculate my average, again, 25.483. It comes up to exactly the same amount. Okay. So this is going to be my ending inventory at the end. $1,529. These are my um, month in totals. And again, I sold 80 units, 60 units, and 100 units, so I have to add them all up to come up with my total cost of goods sold for the month of $6,046. And again, if I add all the units that I sold, it should be the 240 because it's the exact same example. So my total cost of goods sold for the month is $6,046 under this weighted average method. And I have to, again, um, calculate my sales to come up with my gross profit. But let's double check to make sure that these amounts are correct. Okay, make sure you're taking these out to two decimal places. It just happened to be that they um, both ended up with zero cents, but that doesn't mean that your problem is going to end up with zero cents. So make sure that you're taking um, these out to uh, two decimal places, your total cost to two decimal places, your weighted average to three decimal places. Um, so let's figure out our cost of goods available for sale, just like we've done with the other three methods. Our beginning inventory plus all of our purchases gives us our cost of goods available for sale, right? And that should agree with our cost of goods sold for the month plus what we came up with our ending inventory at the end of the month. $7,575, $7,575, and it does. So then that means that all of our math here should be correct, especially with this weighted average method because there is a lot of math going on here. Okay, so make sure you're double checking that. All right, so now we need to calculate our sales so that we can then fill in our gross profit. We, again, sold 80 units at a sales price of $35. We sold 60 units at a sales price of $35 and 100 units at a sales price of $35. So we're just picking up the sales here, right? So I sold a total of 240 units. All of them were sold for $35 a piece. So when you do that math, you come up with $8,400 worth of sales for the month. And I calculated how much each one of those 240 units cost me using the weighted average method, taking the weighted average unit cost out of three decimal places. And I come up with total cost of goods sold of $6,046. So these same 240 units that I just sold using the weighted average method, I calculate they cost me $6,046 when I purchased them. So the profit I made on these 240 units should be $2,354. So these three numbers here that are in bold are the numbers that my math is going to ask you to input. But again, you're going to have to calculate the sales in order to be able to um, calculate the gross profit. Okay, so that's the weighted average method. And again, some students really like this method. They think it's the easiest of the three methods and other students really struggle with this. So hopefully this video will help bring some clarity.